Welcome back. I'm Craig Sigal, your anti-practice expert, here talking about your next five no-practice strategies. We left off with number 10. Let's go to 11. It is this simple from now on. Once you decide on a club, you want to go all out with it. Pretend that that is the right club. It doesn't matter if it really is or not. The bottom line is it's far more important to be decisive than it is to be right. And here's why. You see, your unconscious mind, your subconscious mind, if you prefer that term, can make adjustments given your intention, your target. It doesn't matter what club you have is what I'm saying. Dave Pels did some studies about putters telling him about a target line they had, and it turns out that actually measuring them, watching them with video, they didn't actually hit along their target line. They added to compensate for their mistakes at underestimating breaks. And he came up with this idea, proven that your unconscious mind will make those adjustments. So decide on a club, go all out. No practice strategy number two. This is one of the longest holes in Washington, longest par fours. It is about a 470 yard par four. What you want to do from now on is to change your mindset and your decision making out on the course to eliminating those blow up holes. Stop going for birdies. You will be amazed at how your scores drop. It's the final score that counts, not how many pars you get or how many birdies you get. Those mean nothing in the final analysis. And isn't it really the reason why you play is to beat your last score or to win in competition. So many people lose sight of that while, while they're out on the course. And think of this fact. It is 100 times easier to prevent a double or triple than it is to go for a birdie. You're playing the odds. You're being efficient. Put your mind towards that and you will lower your score. No practice strategy number 13. Here we go. After finishing a hole, if no one's waiting, go ahead and keep putting. It is within the rules. I don't consider a practice because you're out there playing. And I would also recommend that you take fresh, new, game-like putts. Don't do those do-overs. The problem with that is you have a tendency to want to focus on your stroke. All right, you've already read the green and you're learning to fix your stroke on there. That's not your problem. Your problem is you want to condition your mind towards reading greens, developing that trust and that feel, and that only happens when you do fresh new putts. When you do a do-over, what are you telling your unconscious mind? What are you telling your body? Well, that there's always going to be a second chance. There's never a second chance when you putt. So don't even bother doing do-overs. No practice strategy number 14. Here we go. Forget that old school teaching to focus on your weaknesses. <laughs> All you're doing is giving thought energy to your weaknesses and then you will get more of them. What you want to do is for every bad shot, Go ahead, analyze what went wrong, and then let it go. Forget it. The fact is, you've made great shots with all of your clubs, and you want to tell yourself, your unconscious mind, that this is the way you play, and then you will get more of them. That concept is so simple. I don't understand why golfers do just the opposite, and then are surprised when they screw up the way they have been thinking about over the last few holes or the last round. Replay great shots in your mind over and over and over. No practice strategy number 15. For putting, always hold your finish. Many top pros say that you want to listen to the ball going to the cup, not even look. If you want to go that far, great. I can tell you lots of pros have said that they don't even look up like I'm doing in that picture. Here's what happens. If your focus is on holding that finish, you will always have a smooth stroke down your target line. It eliminates so many variables in what happens before you swing. You see, I'm an efficiency fanatic. I'm also a minimalist. It is so much easier to put intention into one singular focus. Our minds are designed to work this way, and we complicate things with all these mechanical movements that we have to remember and concentrate on. No. 
just hold your finish on the putting. You will be amazed. And when you get that wire, then move on to the next single thing. But that is at the top of the list. This is what break 80 without practice is all about. Is it a swing system? No. Is it a mental game process? No. Is it about mechanics and drills? No. It's all of the above. It's the quick, fast way to go right to the heart of what it is that you really want out there, lowering your score. And it eliminates all that clutter and confusion. I've distilled out of all these pros saying all these contradictory things what it is that can get you to your lowest score when you don't have enough time to spend hours and hours and hours, thousands of balls, hitting range balls. And if you can do that, by all means, do it you'll still find amazing benefits out of what I want to teach you. And it is definitely designed for busy people in an audio format, along with some supplemental bonuses and web pages and emails that follow up afterwards to keep you going, keep you on track. Click the graphic below and you'll be taken to the sales page and you will learn all about it. My name is Craig Sigal and I'm here for you. Greens and fairways.